five, four, three, two. Hey guys, I am Daisho, and I am here bringing you another in-depth guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at Realm of Illusion. I can actually pronounce this one today, so that's definitely a better start than last time, right? A lot of you really wanted to see this series and see it make a comeback, so here I am making a comeback with this series. I really like this deck. This is right now my favorite deck, even more than the Artifact deck. It just runs a lot faster and better, and it has more ways to deal with different things that your opponents give you. Okay, so let's start out. This card, target creature gets minus one until end of turn. Draw a card. It's not the minus one, minus oh until end of turn can sometimes actually be in your favor. If he attacks with something like a 2-2 a two -two and you have a 2-2, two -two and he just figures you won't trade, but then you play this card and then it becomes a 1-2 and then... It works out in the, in your way, but the only reason this this card is really in the deck is a it's an instant and it's one cost and it lets you draw one card. So that basically means you can it's really uh, flexible. You can basically wait until the end step of their turn, so when they can't really do anything else, and then you can use the card to draw a card, just in case you wanted to save the mana open for a cancel or something. But uh, so I really like this card. It's it's a one one cost draw card and it's an instant so that's great then you got four of these guys this is also a very very good card phantasmal bear um it's a one cost two two that's the good part and then its ability is a bad part when it becomes the target of a spell or ability sacrifice it so that means anybody can just do any sort of spell or ability on it and sacrifice it if it if they have a card that says deal one damage to the opponent that will kill it if they have um a creature that says tap target creature then that will kill this card so it dies very easily but on the other hand it's also there's a lot of situations where they can't kill it plus i'm going to show you something and uh, show you how you can save these kind of creatures ether figment this card is all right it's uh, a one one unblockable for uh, two costs which isn't bad and then if you have the mana open then you can kick it and then it becomes a three three unblockable and three unblockable is good. Five cost is a little expensive, so this creature is definitely a little too a little too expensive for uh, for some situations. But it can be really useful sometimes. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Sorry about that, guys. You're just gonna have to wait a second while I uh, while I go back in here. I meant to um, meant to just whatever. Okay, you guys know what I'm talking about. So anyway, this card's a good card. Counterspell. I don't know why they put Counterspell in this deck instead of Cancel, because Counterspell is like the super awesome version of Cancel that they decided was too powerful, so then they like took it out, but uh, there it is, Counterspell's right here, and it is back and better than ever. <laughs> um, so uh, then this card is going to be your main card, this is kind of like the Steel Overseer, or the, uh, man I can't remember that card, I was, uh, Ethereum Sculptor, that's it, um, the Ethereum Sculptor of this deck. So Crovian Mist, this card flying power and toughness equal to the number of illusions on the battlefield so it's a flyer which means that it can get around a lot of defenders plus this card's an illusion this card's an illusion all of these cards are an illusion um most of your creatures illusion 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 no that's not an illusion this is an illusion a lot most almost all the creatures in this deck anything that doesn't have a special bonus is going to be your illusion so if i had to compare this to a card i would compare it to steel overseer it makes this card stronger and it's really good but um obviously it's not a perfect comparison then there's this card, which is just amazing. Illusion creatures you control get plus one, plus one. If that's all this card said, it would be in the deck. But then the last three words just make it super amazing. And have hexproof. That basically means that nobody can target your illusion creatures. It would be so amazing if this creature was an illusion creature, but he's a human wizard. So that's something that you really have to take into account. This creature will not buff this guy. He won't make him any stronger because this guy, I mean, he will make him plus one, plus one. So I guess that that point is kind of moot. But um, anyway, this card is amazing because if the, if your creatures have hexproof, then they can't target. It can't be the target of a spell or ability. So then you can't sacrifice it. So that is something that you really should uh, should keep in mind. If you got these these guys out, then your creatures, let's say, sacrifice it when it becomes the target of a spell or ability. That isn't that takes away that negative of the creature, and then it just becomes a really really strong and powerful creature, especially since it gets plus one plus one. Uh, Blind Phantasm. These creatures are just illusions. It's a three cost for a two three, which is something that I normally wouldn't like, but since it's an illusion, it's going to stay in the deck. 
it'll buff this guy, it'll get stronger from this card. That's pretty much the reason why I keep these guys in. They're just, and they're a low cost creature, you kind of need these sometimes, especially since this deck is going to be really aggro and it's going to work really well. Cancels. This deck, I love it because what you can do is you can basically play some creatures early, play some good creatures early, and then get ahead. Then once you get ahead, forget about playing the rest of your creatures. Just save your cancels. Save cancels, counterspells, um, cards that send, uh, what's that card called? This card, Repulse, save those guys, just send everything back to their hand, cancel it when it comes into play, do stuff like that to screw with them, and just um, work with, with the board position that you already have. And that's that's definitely one, um, one of the best ways to run this deck. This is basically just going to introduce me to the next part of this deck, so the parts that we've seen so far are Flying, um, flying Illusions, Illusions that uh, don't really... Don't really... Uh, get hurt by their negative because we have that other card that ha gives them hexproof and then there's the uh, cancel part of this deck and then the next part of this deck that um, really helps is card advantage so there's a few draw cards in this deck and a lot of the times you're going to be able to use these draw cards unfortunately this one is a sorcery so that means that you have to use it on your turn and you can't save the mana open for a cancel or something why is this guy wearing nail polish by the way but anyway um you can't save the man open for a cancel, but it does give you a two card, draw two cards for three costs, which I don't mind. I mean, I think that's really good. Phantom Warrior is just a 2 2 unblockable. It is an illusion, so that's amazing. I mean, look at this guy. He's just walking through the door that's completely sealed. If you think that you can block that, you're just mistaken, sir. Repulse is a really good card. It allows, it focuses on two parts of the deck. So it allows you to A, send a creature back to the hand, which helps the control part of this deck. And then B, it lets you draw a card, plus it's an instant, so you can do it at their end step while they're attacking. Whenever you want, if you want to wait for them to um, to attack, and then you want to do it at their end step so you get to draw an extra card, that's perfectly acceptable. This card is in the deck, uh, because it's another it's another one of those draw cards. It's four costs, and it's draw three cards, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. This guy is another one of those guys when it becomes the uh, target of ability of a, a target of a spell or ability sacrifice it, but it's a 5-5 five, five flyer. So especially if you got one of those human wizards out, one of these guys, then you are going to be Lord of the Unreal. If if you got a Lord of the Unreal out, you're going to be so set with with this guy because he's going to be a 6-6 six, six and they can't even target him. So it's amazing. Um, this guy is a 4-5, and he's not flying, so this card is pretty much just infinitely better than this card, but even so, a 4-5 for 4 costs is, is pretty decent. This guy is a fairy wizard, and I'm, he's not in the deck because he's a creature. He's in the deck because he can steal a creature, and I mean, let's be honest, if there was another Phantom Warrior, I'd probably take this card out, but you're limited in what you can play and stuff, so... This is a good card, it'll steal a creature, which is always nice, but they can, don't forget, they can always just target this guy, and once they kill him, then they get their creature back, so that kind of sucks. But, then there's Summoner's Bane. This card is alright, because not only can you kill a creature spell, but you can put a 2-2 uh, two, two blue illusion, so it's an illusion, it counts for all your illusion stuff, and not only does it say you can't have your creature, but it says, give me another one of mine. So that's really good, that's why I like this card. Obviously, it's an instant because it's a cancel, um, but anyway, evacuation, this will just help you in a uh, situation that you're really, really screwed in, but be careful when you play this card, because I am not sure, but I'm pretty sure that last time I played, uh, whoops, I played evacuation, I lost this kind of creature when it, when it says when it becomes the target of a spell or ability, and that shouldn't happen, because nowhere on this card... Does it say target? It says return all creatures to their owner's hands. And this card says when it becomes the target of a spell or ability. So it's not becoming the target. The wording actually matters in this situation. And this creature should return to your hand. It shouldn't be sacrificed. But I'm not sure if the game gets the mechanics right. So you should be wary of that before you before you rely on it as your uh, win condition. Mind control, it's the same thing as this guy. Uh, this guy basically just steal one of their guys it's fun I like it it's one of my favorite cards in real life I like to use it and then time warp just just time warp there's like there's nothing to say about this card other than it's absolutely amazing it's just t target player takes an extra turn after this one you get to go twice in a row so 
it's absolutely amazing literally there it's just it's just i mean there's no way i mean i can describe why it's good but i don't think that would even benefit you guys because you guys know you want to go twice you want to just go as many times as you can each player draws x cards i don't like that why am i letting my opponent draw that doesn't give me a card advantage at all this card I would only use if I was in like a terrible situation and I'm like, all right, I lose next turn unless I draw something amazing. So then I use this card, but um, I don't think it's that good. Whenever a player plays a blue spell, I don't really like the life gain artifacts. Mind Spring, this card is all right, but as you can see, it costs two blue and one X. So that means that if you wanted to draw one card, you'd have to pay three. But let's go on over to Divination, which uh, you get to pay three and you get to draw two cards. Of course, Mindspring can make it so, like, if you draw ten cards or whatever, or not, not if you draw, but if you have, like, seven mana or whatever, then you can play this card and you can draw five cards. So that's nice. But in general, I don't really like to wait for the game to get that long, and I'd rather have something like Divination, which will give me an extra card for one less mana. Either Adept is, is a good card. I just didn't really know what to take out for this guy. Uh, I don't. I like everything in this deck the way it is. Plus, I would rather not. Uh, I I think I have enough control. I don't need more cards to send people back to their owner's hand. But this is one of the cards where if somebody gave me a really compelling case, then I would probably put it back in the deck. But as of now, I'm just going to keep it out. Wall of Air. It's it's so pointless in this deck. You don't need defense. You want attack, and it's not even a. It's not even an illusion, so I don't understand why they put that in there. Target creature gets minus 7, minus 0. Yeah, okay, so it'll save you one turn from one creature. Big deal. Air Elemental, it's a 5 cost 4-4 four, four flyer. It's pretty pointless. Drake Umbra is a 5 cost to give your creature plus 3, plus 3. It can be helpful, sure, but uh, there's nothing in the deck that I would rather, that I would uh, take out for this card. I think that every other card in the deck is better than this card, even though this was the last one that you unlock, but... Um, maybe this card? This would be the only card that I would think to maybe take out for, for Drake Umbra. I'm actually thinking of doing that actually right now that I, now that I see that. Because this card is a little too expensive for what he is. It's two costs for a 1-1, one, one, or five costs for a 3-3. Three, three. So, I don't know. He's unblockable. Can't hurt. Whatever. Jace's Ingenuity. This is a good card. It, um, is five cost. And that's why it's not in the deck, because the way I have it set up is it runs really, really quickly with these guys and this card, both at two cost, and then maybe these guys at three cost. You're going to be laying a lot of creatures really quickly. Still, this is not the worst card to have in the deck. If, if I saw somebody running Jace's Ingenuity, even in a trimmed down 60 card deck, then I wouldn't say that they're the worst play in the world or anything. Uh, what we what do we got here? Quicksilver Geyser. This is this is also a decent card. Return up to two target non-land permanents to their owner's hands. It's uh, it's definitely a decent card. I know that I've said that a lot of, about a lot of these guys. I guess I really have to uh, think about this deck more because maybe I'm not completely set on what I maybe uh, maybe I want to be taking this card out and putting in uh, Quicksilver Geyser, but uh, we'll see. And then this card is completely pointless in this deck. I don't know why it's a rare card. If you didn't know, then you see where it says creature, and then it says Jin, and then all the way to the right it says D12. Well, the number and the letter, that, that symbol, or the symbol over there, that symbolizes the edition that it is, so that means that it's 12th edition. And then the color of that thing symbolizes the, uh, the rarity. So black means common, silver means uncommon, rare, uh, yellow means rare, and red means mythic rare. So... Uh, just a little piece of fact. See, Quicksilver Geyser is a common. It doesn't always tell you about, and this is a, an uncommon. Wow, and I can find a Mythic Rare for you. Um, this one is Mythic Rare. But it doesn't always tell you how good the card is, but it sometimes gives you a some, some idea. But obviously, in this case, 6 cost for a 5-6 flyer is alright. But again, it, ha it really has no place in this deck. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it for this 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 uh, breakdown, in-depth breakdown of the mono blue aggro illusion cancel draw deck, whatever you want to call this deck. I really enjoy playing it, and I think that it is definitely one of the top three decks so far unlocked. Um, but yeah, that's about it. If you have any comments, then I'll be more than glad to to look at them and maybe make some changes to my deck. And if I do make some changes to my deck, I'll definitely let you guys know. And uh, then you can maybe take cha ta make changes to your deck. But one thing that I did want to say, if you ever are on the PS3 and you're playing in a random match, 
then uh, just be kind enough. And you see Is Dice Show in the bottom corner. That's my PSN. It's the same thing as my, my YouTube channel. Be kind enough to either A, send me a message telling me that you're going to use my super awesome broken deck. No, I'm joking. But um, Or or B, just uh, just quit out and, and don't beat me and lower my score. I would be so sad. But I'm just joking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. Bye.